Wildcard playoff weekend is coming, but you know what time it is as well? It is draft season. That means it is mock draft season for at least the top eight teams out there, top 18 teams in the NFL, in the NFL draft that are not in the playoff tournament. So let's take a look at mock draft ESPN style and where we think things could really happen at the top of this 2024 phenomenal shaping up to be NFL draft coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to Peacock and Williamson. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We appreciate all the everydayers out there. Please give us a little subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Maybe the thumbs up on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. We're talking mock draft today, taking a look at ESPN's latest. Now the top 18 picks, the non-playoff teams, are set and that draft order is set here in January heading into the 2024 offseason. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Price Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. All right, shout out to Jordan Reed of ESPN. Now that we have a draft order, Matt, or at least the first 18 picks in the NFL draft are set. We're going to examine those, get to know some of the top prospects in the draft a little bit better as we head into the offseason here. Talk a lot about the playoffs tomorrow, making picks, previewing those wildcard playoff games, but taking an opportunity here on this Thursday episode to uh, look at the NFL draft and the top of the draft. And it starts with the Chicago Bears and a massive decision that will change the fate of numerous teams behind them in the draft this year, Matt. Yeah, and so I don't claim to be a draft expert. I mean, it's only January. I'm more concerned with playoffs and those type of things. But I have paid a lot of attention, but it's mostly reading and casual watching and things like that. So don't take my evaluations of these players as gospel or anything. However, quarterbacks aside, and there's a chance there's quite a few quarterbacks taken in the first round, and maybe even quarterbacks the top three picks or three of the top five picks or something like that. So there will be quarterbacks go quick. But if you're in the need for an offensive tackle, which is like 90% of the league, or if you are in in the wide receiver market, you're going to be very happy with what you have to pick from this year. The other position that stands out, while there's not a sauce or a Jalen Ramsey, there's a lot of corners that need to be, you know, ciphered out to figure out who's above who. But a lot of long press man type corners that I think will start rolling after the outside the top 10, but there's not going to be a lot of defensive players drafted super high and defensive tackle in particular is really weak. I wouldn't expect a first round running back or safety this year either. Great draft for awesome offensive tackles and wide receivers. If you're a team awesome. that doesn't need yeah. a quarterback, you're like, cool, as many quarterbacks as possible. Go ahead and get <laughs> yeah. one of these tackles, one of these wide receivers. Cause you know, multiple wide receivers play for every team. I don't know a team out there. that's not like I could use one more superstar wide receiver. Or a team out there that's like oh. a, an offensive lineman, an offensive tackle. Everybody seems like is in need of uh, one bookend or the other, and, and a lot of teams both going into and, the 2024 offseason. And there's so many teams that have a tackle out there that, boy, if I could kick him into guard, that's where he's really well suited and get better at two spots. You know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. Well, let's start this thing up, and this is from the latest from ESPN and, and Jordan Reed's mock draft, and we're going to utilize his mock draft and kind of talk through some of these things. And he has the Chicago Bears, no trades that he has. I do want to talk about some trade scenarios, and this is mm-hmm. obviously one of them. But I do think the Chicago Bears do end up taking a quarterback here. There's the the news that Aberflus is sticking around. Getsy gone. Uh, is that a signal that Justin Fields is more likely to stay, less likely to stay? I don't know. Um, I, Justin Fields just hasn't quite shown enough to me to be super confident. If your evaluation of Caleb Williams or Drake May, for that matter, mm-hmm. top two quarterbacks in this class, is that high, 
I, I, I think you'd go draft that quarterback at one and, and they could get some awesome offers potentially for some teams that really love Caleb Williams at the top. But Jordan has Caleb Williams going number one to the Chicago Bears. And right now, if I was sitting as GM of the Chicago Bears, I would lean to sticking and picking and going with the top quarterback in the draft with this pick. I do as well. I was hoping we would fight about this for the next three months, but oh, well, I think we're both going to see this the same way. But for the sake of a mock that you're not allowed to do trades, it would screw it all up if he didn't take a quarterback here. A quarterback is going one. So Caleb Williams oh, sure. comes off the board. So that's yeah. no matter what the team is. I mean, someone could trade up. We mentioned Atlanta. I mean, there's five other teams, I'm sure, that would knock on the Bears' door for either Fields or the pick. But I think the pick is going to be a quarterback here. So good thing. You, you, know, what I, <laughs> you know what? I, you know what convolutes this even more for me, though? Mm-hmm. And it's probably where a lot of Bears fans are pulling their hair out when they're looking at this. And, and, and for some reason, like, Everyone hates Luke Getze, and he's been fired, so he's not going to be the offensive coordinator mm-hmm. for Fields or Caleb Williams in Chicago. But everyone's kind of rallying around Averflus, and everyone's kind of rallying around Justin Fields. Like, Oh, they chant he, for him at the games. For, right. for how bad he's been and how bad the team has been, everyone really believes in, in, and wants Justin Fields to succeed. And I was a huge believer of Justin Fields coming into the draft, and I asked you this question, I think, earlier on this offseason, or this, this season, early in the season. And my question to you was, is – if Justin Fields fails, is he the most talented guy ever that truly cares and is trying hard to fail at quarterback? Because he's insanely good. He's a great arm. His ability to hit deep throws. and like He's got all the physical talent you could ever want. And it seems like he's smart and is actually trying really hard. He's not being derailed by off-the-field stuff. Uh, and, and still to fail, is, is he might be one of the most talented to fail if he does. So I can see where bears fans are at, like with the belief that he could be the guy and Caleb Williams is not like in the, in the, the biggest downfall for Justin Fields is not being able to play on schedule, right? Not being able yeah. to hit your back foot on a three-step drop and anticipate and hit a throw, but Caleb Williams, that's not his game either. So you watch Caleb Williams play and be like, that kind of looks a lot like Justin Fields in college. I don't know enough about Williams, but yeah, I hear exactly where you're coming from. I mean, when we have this conversation, To me, the biggest thing is I get to buy more time with the rookie, even if it's not Williams, if it's May or Daniels or whoever. I just think it makes too much financial sense that I get to buy time before I have to decide how much do I pay fields. You know, I mean, I I want that rookie contract. I can go keep getting DJ Moore's and Montez Sweats while I have a rookie deal. The, the rookie deal is sort of a bonus to me because I've gone through this a lot and, and people are talking about, um, you know, with 49ers quarterbacks and, and the 49ers trading up in the draft to get Trey Lance. And it's like, oh, we want mm-hmm. a rookie quarterback contract. I'm like, no, you want a good quarterback. That's what you want. No matter what. Yeah. I'll the take best Burrow or Herbert need, on their contract. Yeah. If I'm a betting man and I had to bet on whether Justin Fields or Caleb Williams can be a star in the NFL, I think a better chance it's Caleb Williams. So that's why I'm making this. I agree game. on that too. I've seen enough of Fields that, hey, I mean, I would mind the fields coming to the Steelers, you know, I mean, but if I have the first overall pick, I'll take door number two. Unless the Washington commanders trade up to one from number two, which might be the, if you keep fields, that's the best scenario. Double dip with your trade down, get a bunch from the commanders. Then you're sitting at two and you're still potentially getting teams to trade up for, for Drake may with the second pick in the draft. But I think Mm -hmm. not knowing who could potentially trade up to number one, with what the bears are going to do here. I think the most likely pick in the entire NFL draft this year is what Jordan Reed has here mocked to Washington, which is Drake may North Carolina quarterback at number two. Yeah. I mean, unless by chance may goes one or they like Daniels better, but quarterback at two to the commanders lock it up almost, right? (laughs) Lock it in. doesn't matter who the coach is. doesn't matter what other things happen in the off season. Uh, near 100% certainty unless the, the commanders get really frisky and, and even move up to number one. I think is the only thing. So, uh, yeah. yeah, quarterback at two, very likely right now. Things could change. There might be some teams that like May more than Williams. But as things have been for a, a calendar year, basically, we kind of knew that it was going to be Caleb Williams and, and Drake May one and two in this draft class. And we'll see if that turns out to be the case. Yeah. And, I mean, there's other phenomenal prospects, but they're not quarterbacks. So that's, I think, going to be the top two picks. And then – I think it gets interesting. Is Daniels or is QB three, however it shakes out, worth the third pick over right. Marvin Harrison Jr., over Calvin Johnson? You know what I mean? Yes, that's huge. And might different teams look at that differently? Might the mm-hmm. Patriots look at that and say, man, uh, we like a package of moving back better than 
blank quarterback at three because we think there's maybe two or three other quarterbacks that we kind of like as much, and maybe we get one of those guys later anyway. And does another team say, no, screw that. We love a third quarterback, and maybe we yeah. like this guy, the best quarterback in the draft. We're willing to come up to three to get him. Or do the Patriots think that that quarterback is there for them at three? So we'll, we'll talk about the Patriots, the third pick in the NFL draft, and go through the top 18 selections here in the latest ESPN mock draft next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And a lot of folks try to change who they are in a new year, right? New year, new you. Well, around New Year's Eve, why are you so obsessed with changing who you are? There's so much good happening in you, in your life. How about expand on what you're already doing right in your life? And that's where therapy comes in. Therapy helps you find your strength so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make some changes that actually stick in 2024. So if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, Start with BetterHelp. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire online. Uh, you get matched at BetterHelp.com with a licensed therapist, and you can always switch therapists at any time if you if you don't jive with them for no additional charge. So celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today and get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp.com. H E L P betterhelp.com slash locked on. All right, here we go. We've got Caleb Williams, Drake May, should be no shockers there, one and two. Um, no trades in this mock draft. I do want to talk about some potential trade scenarios. We've been asked about it on our mailbags recently. Uh, Jaden Daniels, LSU quarterback, former Arizona State quarterback. He's been in college for a long time and really had an unbelievable year this season with LSU going to the Patriots at number three. But I think this is where things could get amazing in the draft. And I think a lot of draft boards could start to really look a lot different in 32 different draft rooms as far as who the third quarterback is or how valuable a certain player is at this point in the NFL draft because there's other players like Marvin Harrison Jr. who is going number four of the Arizona Cardinals in this mock draft that a lot of folks probably have at the top of their draft board is like, maybe this is just the best pure player. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, so the questions that, we're, we're, that none of us know, and we need to figure out between now and the end of April are: Are there three superstar quarterbacks in this draft, or is there only two? Is there a consensus? Does the Patriots look at it and say, "I would take May or Williams here, but not Daniels," or "I'd take Daniels and May here, but not Williams"? You know, so that's very interesting to me. Or could the Patriots? I assume Belichick will be gone, but could Belichick say? I'm going to bring back Jacoby Brissett, and with our early second rounder, I'm going to try to get a Will Levis type, or get back in the first round and roll my and do that move with Marvin Harrison. You know what I mean? And you know what's funny is uh, it's even hard to learn sometimes with the with the benefit of history too. Because if you're the Chicago Bears, what are you learning from history? If we go back to the 2021 draft, Matt, I don't know if you remember that draft that had three quarterbacks go one, two, three, and five first round QBs. Okay. Justin Fields is one of those. Yes. Only one of those quarterbacks in their third season in the NFL is in the playoffs right now. That quarterback is yeah. Trey Lance, who's the third string quarterback on the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys right now. All those franchises, all five of them thought, man, we really changed things and we got the next super superstar quarterback. And Trey Lance is a number three in Dallas, and he's the only one that's currently in the playoff. And Jacksonville might be the only one that's quite happy with their guy. Yes. You know, like and, content. And obviously, one of them already traded away, and two of those are very unhappy with the way things went. Yeah. I mean, Mac Jones looks like a failure. You know, right. That's why the Patriots had Gene Daniels in this mock draft going number three overall to them. So uh, do yeah. we do we not do we overvalue the quarterbacks in the draft? Should, do you need so much more around them that you, you if you're the Bears, you're you're crazy to draft another quarterback? Uh, and if you're another team, are you crazy to trade up? Because these guys are all coin flips anyway. See, I think New England's a lot different than the Bears. I mean, the Bears at least have a decent line, a run game, some receivers like the Patriots. I don't care which one of these three, if you threw in that just right now, would fail. You know, like they're terrible yeah, yeah. around. They them, need you know the most I mean? total help. So that might be the real hinge point in a team that really believes that they are mm -hmm. a quarterback away that could move up. 
and draft the, the QB3 and the Patriots might be willing, as crazy as it might seem to some of their fans who think they just need the quarterback too, to actually move down in this in this draft. So that that would be an interesting, and that would be a classic Patriots move to move down from number three. The, you know, the first time you have a, a top five pick in the Belichick era, if he sticks around, yeah, we're trading down from it. We're, we're collecting picks. So that, that would be super interesting there. Marvin Harrison Jr., not a shocker, going to the Arizona Cardinals at number four. Need meets value. I love where they sit. Yeah. Uh, no, no, assuming no. they truly are happy with Kyler, which I believe, they're going to get Harrison or their choice of tackles. Great. And the, the uh, Los Angeles Chargers at five, Malik Neighbors, Jaden Daniels, number one wide receiver from LSU going there. Uh, I love that for the Chargers as well. They can sit back in five and, and kind of in a similar situation as the Cardinals. Like, okay, you go wide receiver, we'll go offensive tackle. You go uh, wide receiver, you go tackle, we'll go wide receiver. You go wide receiver, mm-hmm. we can still go wide receiver because it's a great draft with those positions. Yeah, and it has to all about be, let's make Herbert as comfortable as possible. Allen and Williams both could be gone. Certainly one will be gone. Quentin Johnson doesn't look like he's the answer. I think Allen and, and Williams, even if they're around, they've only, they've combined to miss 29 games in the last couple of years. I mean, you just yeah, can't count on yeah. them. And yeah, Quentin Johnson, you can't though. count on the first rounder from yeah. last year either. That's a little, uh, yeah. that, that one might not be, uh, doesn't look like the greatest pick at this point, but we'll see. The Giants at six are also kind of in a, Wow, maybe Jaden Daniels falls to me. Yeah. Maybe I'll take one of these receivers, or maybe, maybe I'll have, take a tackle. You know, maybe like maybe we have a different quarterback that we like. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, uh, they're maybe. in a good spot too. And here's the thing: we had a question in the mailbag that we didn't get to from Paul. He says, "Might the Giants try to trade up for a top three quarterback? Given Jones can be cut at no cost after the 2024 season." Uh, absolutely, I can see that. Yeah. I, I think the Giants are 100 percent in the market for a quarterback and they could take one at six. If the right guy falls, they could be moving up. Absolutely. Um, they need a lot too. So they could be a team that moves down as well. I think the giants could be really mobile in this draft. Yeah. Getting six to three, wouldn't be that hard. You could go six to 10 and maybe grab Penix, or you could sit at six and hope Daniels gets there or be very happy with neighbors or alt or any of those guys, you know? Right. Uh, and that's what is, is happening here in this mock draft with no trades. The Giants stick at six and and it goes wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, four, five, six here. And it is uh, the Washington wide receiver, Odunze, who's, uh, you know, he looks the part. Absolutely. I don't mm-hmm. know if he's a top 10 guy. I've seen a lot of them. Uh, he had 1,640 receiving yards this season. He's a good contested catch receiver, makes some plays down the field. Uh, is he going to be an elite separator in the NFL will be my big question. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, he's a contested catch. Larry Fitzgerald type. Joe Alt going to the Tennessee Titans at pick number seven. I do think the the Titans are in a spot where they're going to see this thing through with Will Levis and, and see what that looks mm-hmm. like. And they need so much help up front. I mean, they're in a good spot. Best tackle available. Tennessee Titans in this mock, it's Joe Alt. Yeah, I mean, in this one, it goes three receivers, three run, or three or three quarterbacks, three receivers. I would also consider receiver here, but if you can get the best tackle or one of the top two at seven, boom. Okay, that's two two years in a row you've gone offensive line. Now you're talking. Atlanta Falcons picking in the eighth spot for the third straight year, Matt, and um, Layatu Latu, the edge rusher from UCLA, is the selection here. The first edge player, the first defensive player, right? Off the board in this yeah. mock draft at number eight. But the Falcons, I think, if we're talking about trade-up teams potentially, and you see all the weapons on offense, they've got to figure something else out at quarterback. Might it be a trade? Might they trade for Justin Fields? Might they go into free agency and, uh, you know, Kirk Cousins route or, or one of those types of things? There's a lot of ways they could go, but they got to figure out quarterback before they make a pick at eight, which makes me think they might not pick at eight. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this one seems the most volatile of where we've talked about thus far. Again, I don't know these prospects as well as I will. I don't know that Leitu would be is a surefire first defensive player off the board, you know? Right, yeah. And so you start looking, if you're a team, that's what's so instructive about these mock drafts. And, and I like that you start with mock drafts with not a lot of trades, and then you look through how things are going to go. Okay, how does this fall? How do we like this? Mm-hmm. Does you know, how how do we feel about the the class in general? Where are the strengths in this class? And if you're like, man, I think we're gonna we're a team that might really need to move up because the player we need is not gonna get to us at eight, and we're gonna hit the phone lines hard. And I think that's who the Fal- Falcons are gonna be this year. Although there's a lot that's gonna change with uh, you know, how these 
consensus rankings go for all these prospects. The draft starts in Mobile, as they say, with the Senior Bowl that is coming up here later in the month. And so uh, a lot to be determined with the draft order and, and these prospects. But getting to know right now the top prospects in the draft, where these teams sit and what the mindset is here in January as we approach the 2024 offseason. All right, picks 9 through 18 in the ESPN mock draft next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Jace Medical and the Jace Case. I know we come to, you know, the sports landscape and kind of escape real life sometimes, but there are some real life conversations that need to be had and some real life realities, right? That's what's, that's what's real about realities in life. And according to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of some antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of flu season. And you might be, uh, you might have certain needs, medical needs for you personally or for someone in your family. And you don't want supply chain issues or natural disasters or pandemics. We've, we've had all of it recently, right? Or maybe you're just traveling with your family. You're going to be out of cell phone range and you need to make sure you have certain medications that you or your family needs. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, respiratory infections, skin infections, many other things. This stuff could happen to any of us. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician visit. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. And use our offer code Locked On to get $20 off your order. All right, here we go. Pick number nine, which is another pick for the Chicago Bears. And I'm pretty confident this will not be a quarterback. What if the what if the Bears what if the Bears just shocked everyone? They moved out of the first pick in the draft, and then all of a sudden, when the when the Atlanta Falcons are on the clock at eight, they suddenly trade Justin Fields to the Falcons. And then all of a sudden the the Chicago Bears pick a quarterback at number nine. Like Pinnix or one of those guys yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean yeah, that's too crazy. That's not going to happen. I don't like the, the chances of it, but I do think there's a chance they take an edge defender yes. or maybe they take another receiver a tackle, you know? I mean, it, it's a th this portion of the draft, you know, the best edge rusher available, you could absolutely see that for the Chicago yeah. Bears. They went offensive tackle last year. They could get the book in there and go left tackle uh, in this class at number nine. They could go wide receiver at number nine. They could continue to move around. They could move up from nine after moving down from one. It's going to be fun. The Chicago Bears are going to dominate the conversation oh. as it pertains to the NFL draft. They could go in any number of directions and have all of the ammo in the world to get it done with two top 10 picks. So it'll be fascinating what happens in Chicago. It's going to be, it's going to be fun no matter what. They have a lot of cards in their hand. Yep. Number 10, uh, we've got uh, Olamolawia Fashanu. I know it's Fashanu with a last name. I, I think I butchered mm -hmm. the first name, but offensive tackle from Penn State. He's been on the radar for a long time as, you know, just that prototype offensive tackle. New York Jets need offensive line help. Uh, obviously, Aaron Rodgers coming off the torn Achilles, so I can see why Jordan Reed threw this in that slot at number 10 for the New York Jets. This is the latest I've seen him go in any mock, and I've watched quite a bit of Penn State. I it would be kind of shocked if he lasted this long, and Jets would just sprint to the podium, you know? Get that guy. Olu Fashanu uh, could go as high as number three overall in this draft. Really. Possible, yeah. And would be shocking if he falls out of the top 10 based on the, you know, the, the rankings I've seen so far. I have a ton of film work to do here in the coming months getting ready for the NFL draft. Um, how about Jerzon Newton, the defensive tackle from Illinois? I've seen him a lot. I, I didn't know much about mm -hmm. Newton. And really late mock drafts in the season have him really high. And in the middle of the first round, Minnesota Vikings at 11 going defensive tackle, maybe one of the only – first round DTs in this class. Yeah. He seems like the consensus number one defensive tackle and only one that's guaranteed pretty much a first round pick. So anywhere on the D line would make sense to me for Minnesota. How do you like the marriage of Michigan quarterback and national champion JJ McCarthy with Sean Payton in Denver at number 12, man? I don't, I'm having a hard time jumping on McCarthy to be very honest with you. I, I mean, I don't know enough. I might change my tune. I mean, that's hundred percent true, but I'm scrolling on my phone right now. So I heard this this morning in the last six Michigan games this year. I mean, that's two playoff games, big 10 title, Ohio state. He threw for a total of 857 yards in six games. 
Like, I know they bludgeon people on the ground and they won and he's the national champion. But if I'm taking a quarterback at 12 and his college team that won it all is kind of hiding him or doesn't need him, I don't love that. And there's been some connection to Jim Harbaugh and the Las Vegas Raiders who pick 13. And, of course, his quarterback in Michigan was J.J. McCarthy. So that can make some sense. Yeah. I'd be shocked if J.J. McCarthy's already taken before Las Vegas is even on the board, whether or not Harbaugh is the coach there or not. Mm-hmm. So I think you're trying to – I mean – and and if we're talking about teams that could trade up, I think Denver Broncos probably need too much to spend a lot trading up, and they just traded a bunch of picks to get a quarterback, right? So now you're going to turn around and start trading more picks for a quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they do need a quarterback there, likely. So Denver Broncos are, are an odd team where they're just behind too many teams, and it, it's going to cost a lot. And you're not going to—I mean, you're you're not going to move all the way up to number one or two, right? You're definitely not moving to two. You're, you're moving. The other to thing I've been told oh. is at this stage of his career, and as complex as his offense is, Sean Payton wants nothing to do with a rookie quarterback. You know, mm-hmm. give me Kirk Cousins that's been around the block that I don't have to coach up every how to take a snap. You know, like, like the Kirk Cousins are out much better than going JJ McCarthy at twelve. Yeah, I agree. Kool-Aid McKinstry, uh, all-name team for the 2024 draft class, cornerback out of Alabama. I've known about him for a long time just because of his name as a high school recruit. Kool-Aid McKinstry, early entry into the NFL draft here, cornerback, Las Vegas Raiders at 13. Yeah, like I mentioned, there's like four or five of these corners that are very traits-oriented, six foot in that neighborhood, that are all going to shake out what order they go in, but I think they're going to start flying off the board or in this neighborhood. New Orleans Saints have picked number 14, J.C. Latham, another offensive tackle, this time Alabama. And now Alabama is uh, required to send one offensive tackle to the first round of the NFL draft every season. This this year it's Latham. Yep, looks like he's a slam dunk. I mean, again, this guy might go sixth overall in most drafts, but there's just so many good tackles. Here's an interesting one, and I don't know if he's going to make it. I don't know what to do with him, yeah. Indianapolis Colts at 15 uh, are selecting in this mock draft from ESPN. Brock Bowers, tight end out of Georgia, looks to be one of the best tight end prospects in a while, but every time there's a best tight end prospect since blank, those players don't turn out in the NFL. So I'm kind of buyer beware on tight ends, uh, you know, in the top 10 of the NFL draft, but I've seen Bowers go as high as three or four. I mean, you're yeah. talking about Belichick and, uh, and, and the New England Patriots. I, I wouldn't be shocked if Bowers goes number three to the Pats if Bill Belichick's still there. And, and he's, a, he's an absurdly good prospect, but we've seen how that's gone with the top tight end prospects and first round tight ends overall in recent history and it hasn't been great for some reason man i think he's the biggest wild card in the first round i mean if he could go if he went fifth i'd understand if he went 15th i'd understand i mean the saints who just picked in the mock would have a hard time passing on him i think absolutely and and you can make the argument at 12 to the the broncos you can make the argument for some of the teams that drafted wide receivers as well you know do do you pair him with a, a young quarterback with the bears at number nine so um, yeah, he'll be a fascinating one and really no telling where Bowers is going to go. He's obviously going to have to light the combine on fire if he wants to mm-hmm. uh, really be a top half of the you know top 10 pick in the NFL draft as a tight end. Yes, a total wild card. I don't know how to comment on him, honestly, but he can play. We've got Troy Fotanu, a guard out of Washington, just recently lost the national championship there, staying in the state of Washington with the Seattle Seahawks at pick number 16, the first interior lineman. Yeah, he's the left tackle at Washington if you watched him, but he kind of has that Skoronsky feel to him where yeah. he does, he's not six seven, so people are projecting him to guard. Move him inside. Um, and you know, Seattle just recently had their young bookend tackles uh selected in the 2021 mm-hmm. NFL draft. Yeah, this is their second season. Yeah, 22 NFL draft, right? Yeah. Uh and so uh yeah, now get an interior guy to go with him. Keon Coleman. Really long, athletic, 215 pounds, six foot four wide receiver from Florida State going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And Trevor Lawrence really does need a young number one wide receiver. So love this selection for him. Staying yeah, in the but, especially with Ridley as a free agent. Uh, Zay Jones could be a cap casualty. Uh, they need O line too in secondary. And if they need O line, we'll stop here at pick number 18 because these are the, the draft, the, the, the picks we know and the draft order that is set. And another offensive tackle. Uh, from the SEC, we've got Georgia offensive tackle Amarius Mims to the Cincinnati Bengals at 18. Love need meeting value here. They tried to move on from Jonah Williams last year already, so Mims could come in, be the right tackle right away, could even be left tackle in the future. Really looks the part. 
Um, hasn't played a lot of football. 6'7", no. 340 pounds, and um, really just a, a draft and developed sort of a player there that just meets all the, the physical attributes for a, a starting offensive tackle in the NFL. 100%. And you got to protect Burrow, and I don't think Jonah Williams will be back, so plug this guy in at right tackle and coach him up. He is very talented. And, of course, you go to ESPN and check out Jordan Reed's complete mock draft. It is mock draft season. We're going to be checking in on mock drafts from time to time, doing our own mock drafts as well because uh, as it is playoff season for some teams, it is draft season for those 18 teams we just talked about here uh, in uh, in this NFL mock draft. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Matt and I back Friday to preview and make picks for wild card round playoff NFL football. Talk to you then. Peacock and Williamson.